Welcome to this video in which we will compute the internal forces in a loaded beam at one or two points in the beam, depending on how much time we have. Uh, you'll recall that internal forces are tension, shear force, and bending moment. And so we'll compute that in this loaded beam. Uh, you can see that this beam is supported at point A with a pivot joint or a pin and at point B there's a fulcrum on rollers. Uh, we have a load out here at the far end of the beam of 750 newtons. The length of the beam is 4.8 meters and the distance between point A and point B is 2 meters. So in order to solve for the internal forces the, for the first thing we need to do is get a free body diagram of the entire beam. Uh, we need to find the reaction forces at A and B. So let's do that. We'll uh, redraw our beam here. And this time we'll put in uh, reaction forces. So we have FAY and FAX. Uh, we have FBY and there's no horizontal component to B because we've got the rollers here. And then we've got 750 newtons here at the end. Okay, so we need to go ahead and find out what these are. The first thing we'll do is we'll look at FAX by summing all of the forces in the horizontal direction. And you can see FAX is the only one. And since we have static equilibrium, all, the sum of all the forces has to be zero, which means that FAX is equal to zero. The next thing we'll do is find moments about this point A. And um, the reason we'll do that is because we have FAY going through A. Uh, by finding moments uh, about point A, we'll be able to find FBY. So the moments about point A we have um, FBY times a moment arm up here of 2 meters minus, and this is positive because it's going counterclockwise, minus 750 newtons times a moment arm of 4.8 meters. And the sum of the moments has to be 0, so this is 0, which then tells us that FBY, when we solve for FBY in this equation, we get FBY is 1800 newtons. And finally, um, we can find FAY by noting that the sum of the forces in the y direction has to be equal to zero. Whoops, I left off a force there. Got just a little excited to be done minus our 750 newtons out here on the end, and that's equal to zero. And so we solve this. We know FBY is given by 1800 newtons. So uh, we solve this, and we find that FAY is negative 1050 newtons. OK, so let's go ahead and actually draw these in back into our original uh, diagram. So we have here a force of minus 1050 newtons. We have no horizontal force. We have a vertical force here of 1800 newtons. Okay, so that gives us then the forces on the beam in its entirety. Now, in order to find internal forces, we need to cut the beam at a point and then look at the free body diagram that we get by cutting the beam. So let me get rid of this stuff here. And um, let's cut the beam. Uh, let's cut it first at the point here. So this is one meter from point A. So from here to here is one meter. And if I do that, I can draw the block diagram. Oops. 
draw the block diagram, or I'm sorry, the free body diagram of the beam with the cut here at one meter. And just to show that we get the same answer no matter which half we choose, we'll draw and work through the other half as well. So on the left hand side I have my force of minus 1050 newtons. At the right hand side where I have the cut I'm going to have a tension. I'm going to have a uh, shear force, which I can write like this, and I'm going to have a bending moment M. Okay, and so I can now use my free body diagram to find out what T, V, and M are. Okay, the first thing I'll do, uh, we sum the forces in the uh, horizontal direction and the only force in the horizontal direction is T, so T is equal to zero. Okay, and that's a consequence of the fact that up here there were no axial forces in the beam. Okay, if we sum the forces in the Y direction, we have, uh, let's see, uh, negative 1050 newtons. I'm sorry, the way I drew this was really bad. That should be 1050 going down, not negative 1050 going down. So if we're using the convention that uh, going up is positive, it's negative 1050 newtons. But the way I drew it, I had it going down and negative, which of course is a bad thing. Okay, so we have this force going down plus or minus V going down, and that's equal to zero. From this we can solve for V as V is equal to negative 1050 newtons. Okay, so the shear force here is negative 1050 newtons. And finally, if we take the sum of moments about this point here, um, then we have uh, this moment, which is positive, and then we'll have the moment uh, uh, produced by V acting over one meter, so we'll have minus V times one meter, and that's equal to zero. When we solve this for the moment, we get that the moment is minus 1050 newton meters. Okay, so what this says is the bending moment um, that we have here is actually going the opposite direction as we've drawn the arrow. V, uh, the shear force, is actually going up, and uh, T is zero. So now let's see if we get the same answers if we do the free body diagram on the, of the other chunk. So we have T there, we have V like this, and we have M like this you'll notice that the arrows are in opposite directions because these forces here and these forces here are reaction forces. Uh, they have to be opposite in direction and equal in magnitude. Okay, so in addition to what we've drawn here, we also have one meter along this part of the beam. So this distance here from here to here is one meter. We have 1800 newtons, and we still have our original load out here of 750 newtons. Okay, so we'll draw a dashed line here to make sure we keep our computation straight. So the only horizontal force here is T, so from that we can just write down T is equal to zero. If we sum forces in the Y direction, we have V plus 1800 newtons, that's this force here and this force here, minus 750 newtons is equal to zero, and when we solve for V we get minus 1050 newtons, okay? Which is good, that's the same as the value that we got uh, over here. And finally, when we solve for M, 
Uh, let's see, what's the easiest thing to do here? Why don't we go ahead and look at the moment around this point? Okay, so we'll have minus m because this is oriented in a clockwise direction plus 1800 newtons times 1 meter. That's this force going up times 1 meter, uh, the moment arm. Minus, because this, this guy's going counterclockwise, but this guy's going clockwise, minus 750 newtons times 3.8 meters. So 3.8 meters is the uh, lever over or lever arm, moment arm over which this guy works. And this is equal to zero. And when we solve this for m, we'll get then that m is equal to minus 1050 newton meters. Okay, so there you have it. We've solved for the tension, and in this case, because there were no axial forces, the tension was zero. We've solved for the shear force, and we've solved for the bending moment. Um, now, we could do this at other points. I'm not going to actually do this at other points because I'm almost out of time. But, uh, for example, uh, out here, we could make a cut at 3 meters, and then we would draw the block die, or I'm sorry, the free body diagram of this chunk. We'd have this force and this force, plus the tension um, shear force and the bending moment on this side, as well as this side. Um, and we can use either of these free body diagrams to solve for tension uh, for TV and M. In this case, it, would, it looks like it's going to be a lot easier to use this right block or free body diagram. I don't know why I have block diagram on the brain today. But we could use this guy to solve for T, V, and M. I won't do it again because we're out of time. So hopefully you found this useful. Thanks for watching.